his explicit goal is to get treatments to patients. So in other words, this $10 million is not to build a building, it's not to endow chairs, it's not to buy fancy artwork for the, it, it is to put drug in vain, it's to get treatments to patients, period. This is the James Cancer Free World Podcast. I'm Steve Wartenberg, and today my guest is Don Benson. Don is a physician scientist, one of the world's leading experts on multiple myeloma. Don will fill us in on some of the advances in the treatment of this somewhat rare form of blood cancer, and he will also share some really exciting news about the creation of the brand new Riney Family Foundation Myeloma Center for Advanced Research Excellence that Don will lead, and how it was made possible by the generosity of Paula and Roger Riney. Welcome to the podcast, Don. Thanks, Steve. It's great to be here. Don, let's start with a little background on multiple myeloma. What is it and what are the current treatment options for your patients? Sure. So multiple myeloma, um, or, or sometimes we just call it myeloma for short, is uh, a form of blood cancer or, or bone marrow cancer. It's in the same family as, as um, leukemia, lymphoma. Sometimes people haven't heard of myeloma before because it's, it's maybe not as common as some of the other blood cancers. But um, having said that, the, the incidence is going up. Um, <clears throat> there's probably over 30,000 new cases a year in the United States. Um, statistically, it's actually the second most common blood cancer in the United States. Um, myeloma is um, typically a, a cancer that we see in people who are... Um, in their mid 60s, it's a little bit more common in men than women. It's a little bit more common in, in um, African Americans than, than people of other racial and ethnic backgrounds. Um, we um, don't have a good, uh, comprehensive understanding of why it happens, how people get myeloma necessarily. Um, but you know, I've I've been taking care of people with myeloma now for about 20 years, and and. The, the things that we can do for them, the, the treatments we can offer them, um, have just grown at an astonishing pace. So in 2021, currently, um, it, it's still generally considered to be an incurable form of, of cancer, unfortunately, which is why we're here and why we're doing research and why we're trying to get uh, to that finish line. Um, but having said that, when I, when I began um, in the field, uh, in the late 90s, the average survival was was between two and three years, and and now it's not uncommon today for people to live ten years or more with myeloma. Yeah, I guess because some of these new new and better treatments aren't that old, you're going to find that the ten years plus is going to grow. I would take it. Yeah, I think that's one of the things that I I talk about with my own patients when when you go on the internet um, or or when you look for um, um, information about my, which I encourage people to do, you know, knowledge is power. Uh, very importantly though, um, when you find a document, when you find a piece of information, look at the publication date, because if it's more than a year old, it's not relevant anymore. The, the speed of progress is really accelerated. So, um, and to your point, a lot of our new drugs, we, we just had a new drug approved two weeks ago. The, the full impact of these things as they come out won't be fully appreciated for many years. Yeah. I mean, the speed of change and the speed of improvement that you and others at the James and around the world are doing it is just, you're right. What the news from a year ago is old news. We got new, a lot of good new news coming out every day. It is. It's, um, so it's, it's great. It's, it's gratifying. Um, but by no means is our work done. We, we still have a lot more to do. So. Well, that leads us perfectly into this new center, which abbreviated, it's called Myeloma Care, C-A-R-E. <laughs> so it began with a $10 million donation, an amazing gift from Paula and Roger Riney. So give us a little of the background. How did this come about? So um, this is really, um, this is really a, uh, a, a transformative gift um, from from uh, Mr. and Mrs. Riney and their foundation uh, to really enable us to do things here that we've we've never been able to do before. So, the the process actually began um, 
just over a year ago. So it was pre-COVID, actually, when um, I had my first conversation with a gentleman who's um, uh, affiliated with the Comprehensive Cancer Center's Drug Development Institute. So just um, tangentially, the the, uh, OSUCCC um, has an intramural drug development institute and and runs really like a... um, um, a nexus or, or, or a resource um, for investigators and scientists and physicians in the James in the Cancer Center uh, to develop new ideas, new treatments, um, and then accelerate them through the uh, preclinical process uh, and, and through the steps that need to be taken until you can take that drug and give it to a, a person for the first time. So Jeff Patrick has done a great job leading the DDI. He has a, a, a phenomenal uh, staff of um, of scientists, of medicinal chemists, of people with business backgrounds, people who um, can do drug synthesis. He really has this wonderful group of, of folks who've already actually succeeded in bringing new treatments to um, to patients. So I had a conversation with a gentleman who's on their external advisory board um, about myeloma and about the, the state of care and treatments that we can offer our patients. Uh, really didn't think anything of it. It was a nice conversation. We spent an hour talking and then led to a second conversation of, um, you know, where are the big centers? Where Where is um, uh, the, the work being done? And, and that was sort of a second general conversation. And, and admittedly, I'm, you know, on some level, a, a simple country doctor. I take care of patients with myeloma and by the time we had our third conversation, Jeff pointed out, you know, this this guy's really interested in your work. You know, <laughs> you need to. I have to jump in and say that yes, you, you may think of yourself as a country doctor, but you and your team have built one of the world's leading myeloma centers for research and treatment. So this is not out of the blue that that these conversations would come about, and that he would look to you. Yeah, that, so thank you for saying that. that that's very kind of you. I, I think that, um, you know, when I when I first started here, I was the only person um, taking care of people with myeloma. The the guy that uh, was here before me left for, for a leadership position in another cancer center. And um, so, you know, that year we, we, I think, did 18 stem cell transplants for myeloma. And um, so fast forward to today, uh, we have eight um, myeloma uh, uh, physicians um, we have four physician scientists and, and basic researchers. And uh, the last time I counted, we had over 100 people on our team going from, you know, physicians to nurse practitioners, physicians assistants, pharmacists, social workers, dietitians, chaplain, PT, OT, uh, entire clinical research staff. Um, so I guess what I'm saying, my, my intention wasn't to build a big, big center. It was to take the best care of patients that we could. And, and maybe the byproduct of that is now we have 7,000 patient visits a year in our, in our center. So. Wow. And, and people come from Ohio and well beyond because of what you built. And so that led to this discussion with this gentleman who's on the board, if I'm understanding it correctly, he's on the board of the, the Ohio state comprehensive cancer centers, drug development Institute. You guys are talking He's realizing how advanced you are in multiple myeloma treatment and research. And I guess that led to the, to the Rhinies. Yeah. And so that ultimately led to this question of what are you guys doing? Um, what's your team doing at Ohio State that's, that's not being done elsewhere? And, and so it turned out we, we have a number of projects in, in my lab and in uh, some of my um, colleagues' labs here. Um, that very promising preclinical work, um, very promising mechanistic data experiments are working out. We had already partnered with the DDI on a couple of these um, projects, and um, that led to our first proposal of here's here's a portfolio of what we're doing that we think is unique and, and exciting and promising um, that that's happening here that may or may not be happening somewhere else. Um, and then that led to... Um, Mr. Reine, um and, and his group saying, you know, put forward a formal um, proposal um, a- as to what it might take to get these across the finish line and, and into clinical trials and, um, and, and ultimately into new treatments and new hope for our patients. 
So I did look him up and Roger Reine is a pretty uh, amazing person that had an amazing career. Why don't you tell people a little bit about who he is in this foundation? So he's, he's a remarkable man. Um, he, um, I, to my understanding, created what at the, at the time was the first online um, stock trading platform, this um, Scott Trade trading platform, uh, and developed that technology and, and I think really helped, you know, many millions of people with their, um, with their savings and their retirement investments and um, sold his company, I believe, to uh, TD Ameritrade several years ago. Um, and since that time, um, he and his wife have just um, been transformative in, in their philanthropy and um, funding, you know, not only myeloma research, but a lot of very important work being done um, literally around the country. So I know I've never met or talked to him or interviewed him, but I know from talking to other philanthropists with large foundations like this, they're smart. They do their due diligence. They do the research. They want their money to do the most good it can. So they really investigated you and must have figured out the great work you're doing. Thank you again for saying that. So it was it was really a, a relationship based uh, agreement. So we, we share common goals. Um, we have a common vision. He he is an incredibly intelligent person. He's also an incredibly kind and and generous and um, thoughtful person in in the interactions that we've had. Very authentic human being. Um, he um, and 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 his wife both incredibly altruistic people. So. Um, but this was the result of, you know, six or seven months of conversation and, and trading ideas and, and putting together a, a, a proposal that um, is ambitious, but achievable, if, if that makes sense. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. And we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, you can talk about the proposal and sort of the, the goals and the mission and the steps you're going to take with the, with the new Myeloma Care Center. A revolution in lung cancer treatment is happening at the James. We're proving lung cancer isn't solely defined by location and stage, but rather the individual molecules and genes that drive it. Simply put, there is no routine lung cancer. That's why our world-renowned specialists put their expertise towards treating one particular lung cancer, yours. At the James, we go beyond the routine to prevent, detect, treat, and cure your lung cancer. To learn more, call 1-800-293-5066. We're back with Don Benson, and we're talking about the new Myeloma Care Center that was made possible by the donation of Paula and Roger Reine. And Don, I just wanted to make sure we discuss this important important aspect of this, that Roger Reine um, had multiple myeloma. Yeah, Steve, he, um, I think, was diagnosed in 2017 um, with with myeloma, and um, uh, is, uh, I, I believe doing well currently. Again, that's, that's great news. And I'm sure that's part of the reason why he and his wife are so invested in research for this particular type of cancer. Mm -hmm. So talk us through your, your talks with him and what you guys came up with and this plan for the center that he created. So we, um, we have a number of projects in house here that we've been working on uh, for several years. And, and so a- actually all five of these would be first in class, first in mechanism, first in target type drugs. And so different ways to think about myeloma and, and, and different ways to treat myeloma, not with poisons or chemotherapies or radiation or surgery, but really with sophisticated approaches in terms of um, what's called immunotherapy, using the body's immune system to kill cancer uh, and then this really exciting area of what they call targeted therapy um, or, or designing, you know, custom designing drugs um, that, that exploit um, the Achilles heel, if you will, of the myeloma cell, the, the vulnerabilities of the myeloma cell. So um, we, we shared a lot of that data with, um, with, with Mr. Reine and his, his um, group. Um, the, the final protocol that, that we arrived at, um, went, went out, um, for multiple independent peer reviews to really make sure the science is rigorous. Um, that actually led to the cut of one of the, uh, programs. We, we actually had seven programs in the, 
first proposal, and one of them, um, the external board said, "No, you're swinging, you're swinging too hard for those fences." You know, they, um, l- like I said earlier, it was really meant to be ambitious but achievable. Um, now it doesn't mean we're not going to come back to that one, or we've stopped working on it, but um, we really put um, this two-year time frame on um, this initial step in the project that by the end of two years, uh, we want to get at least one or two of these across the finish line and then across the street and, and into clinical trials. So um, from Mr. Riney's standpoint, um, his um, explicit goal um, is to get treatments to patients. So in other words, this $10 million is not to build a building. It's not to endow chairs. It's not to buy fancy artwork for the, it, it is to put drug in vain. It's to get treatments to patients, period. Um, under that umbrella is, is kind of where our freedom to operate is with, um, if a project looks like it's becoming very promising to, to um, pivot and, and put more resources there to try to get that across the finish line. If one of the projects seems to be lagging and doesn't seem to be working out, kill it as soon as we can and, and focus on what's working. Um, so a lot of subsidiarity, a lot of ability for us uh, to navigate um, really under this general charge of the mission and the purpose of this center is to get new treatments to patients, period. So if I understand this correctly, there are five specific targeted or immunotherapy drugs that were part of this proposal. Well, seven initially, but then five that made the cut. These are five promising therapies that you, with this new research funds, will try to, as fast as possible, get into clinical trials. Correct. Correct. So the, the, the breakdown of the, it, it's roughly $2 million going into each project. So the 10, the, the $10 million total. Um, but uh, we, so we actually, um, proposed to the Riney Foundation that should this, you know, should we sign this agreement and and really do this, that we would hold ourselves to quarterly reports to them. So we've actually had one quarterly update with them already. We have another one next week. Um, So, so we're, um, you know, certainly looking at this with gratitude because it is a, it is an amazing gift, but also looking at this with a tremendous sense of responsibility that, that we have, deliverables um and and we have milestones and uh um we we share that same goal that that this is really to get treatments to patients this sounds like a pretty unique setup i've never really heard of a of a grant from a, a philanthropic foundation like this that is so specifically targeted not only to one type of cancer but five specific lines of research is this is this rare? So I've, I've never heard of it before. I, and I, and I told you before we started recording, I'm, I'm never going to say unprecedented again <laughs> after, <laughs> but, um, but it, but it is true. I, I don't know of another um, circumstance where an agreement like this was put together. Um, we, um, we're, we're blessed in our program that, that we have, um, Patients who are doing well, families who are doing well, who are who are grateful, who make philanthropic contributions to support our research mission, um, incredibly meaningful to me because I get to work in the lab and and work in the clinic and and see the impact of of that uh, of that generosity. Um, certainly, Pelotonia. We we've been funded by Pelotonia. It's a perfect example of um, people who really sacrifice to raise money because they believe in our mission. Um, but, but this sort of arrangement where the donor gives um, money and, and we have an agreed upon agenda of how this is going to be executed is, is uncommon, to, at least. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of the Pelotonia IDEA grants, where, they're, where you and other investigators put forth a proposal, they're peer-reviewed, and only the best ones are funded by these Pelotonia IDEA grants. Is it, am I on the right track there? So it's interesting you say that, Steve, because um, so, so the Riney Family Foundation has funded, um, to my knowledge, they've funded four centers now. And, and so we've actually started meeting as a group. So Washington University in St. Louis, Dana-Farber, uh, Emory, and Ohio State. And, and I think they're going to add two more, another one in the United States and actually another one in Europe. 
Um, so we've already had had meetings together to see how we can help each other and um, uh, open trials together, get answers quicker by, by working together um, in this in this Rhiney Family Foundation network, if you will. Um, but to your point about Peltania, so so the other thing that the Rhiney Foundation has done is that they partnered with the International Myeloma Society um, to fund um, the equivalent of idea grants. So they, they have two grant mechanisms. One is for um, new uh, junior faculty, fellowship level trainees, um, w- which is similar to what Pelotonia does to, to really get people kick-started early in their career. And then the other mechanism through the IMS is, is really interesting. And, and again, I think I don't, I don't know of a, um, of a precedent. I just said it again. <laughs> <laughs> You didn't say unprecedented. I didn't again, say so. unprecedented. But, oh, oh um, you just said it. <laughs> it. They have a second grant mechanism that's meant to attract new researchers into the field. So, so this is through the IMS where um, they're offering funding to very well-established investigators who may work in engineering or they may work in biochemistry or they may work in, um, you know, a, a related field, um, biophysics or something, um, and have never done work in myeloma before, but it, it's a grant to attract those kind of people into myeloma, into research. So as a matter of fact, we, we put two of those grants into the IMS um, a, a couple of weeks ago. One of my colleagues in, in the department of, um, in, in the College of Pharmacy here, um, and then actually a, a, a colleague of mine in surgical oncology, both of whom are exceptional researchers who've never worked in myeloma before, but you know what, that idea might work. Let's test it. Um, so that's the spirit of those those IMS grants. Boy, everything you just said seems to be the blueprint of the James and Pelotonia, this uh, bringing in new smart people, reaching out and collaborating with different people in all different areas. So uh, it just sounds like a, a perfect fit. It is. And it, it's, um, I, I think the myeloma community, um, you know, worldwide is, is, is a tight, it, I don't know that it's as small as it used to be. There's, there's quite a few people now working in the field, um, but it's certainly still as tight as it used to be. So um, it, it's not unusual for us to, you know, talk to friends at the Mayo Clinic or Dana-Farber, we're at, you know, Barcelona, Paris, um, text on your phone or, e- you know, exchange emails about a particular trial or a particular patient situation. Um, I think that's one of the fulfilling parts of my job is there's just so many good people um, working in the field. And um, th- this center, having the center here really facilitates those kind of relationships and those kind of collaborations. So you're three or four months into this $10 million mm-hmm. grant with your five specific plans. Look ahead. Like what's your hopes? What's your dream? What do you see happening two years from now or even longer term with, with these five projects? Um, well, I, I mean, in a perfect world in, in two years, we'd have all five into phase one trials. I, I think that's ambitious, um, but, but it's certainly not out of the realm of possibility. We, we have two, um, two of the projects I think are very close. And I, and I think it's, it's um, I, I expect myself and my team to get those across the finish line if we really work together and we be clever and we be creative and we innovate, we can get answers and we can get um, progress much faster. Okay. I, good luck with that and keep us in the loop and fill us in and maybe a year or two, we'll have you back to tell about some of the great progress you're making. I look forward to it. Thank you so much. This podcast is brought to you by the Ohio State University Comprehensive Cancer Center, Arthur G. James Cancer Hospital, and Richard J. Solov Research Institute. For more information, check out our website, cancer.osu.edu.